Okay. So um, I don't think that this will be very long. So if there's comments or, or questions or anything on anything I share, I, I believe we should have some time for that if it's needed. But I just wanted to talk about something that is so important um, it, when it comes to us prospecting. And that is our mindset. I don't want to just talk about mindset. Okay. But I, I but I want to talk about our mindset around prospecting and some things that I think can't not that I think some things that I know will be game changers for some people. Um, some of you already are really strong in these areas. Others of us could stand to use some, some improvement, but I think all of us can take something away from, I know myself included from the things I'm going to be sharing this morning, but I want to just really more than anything this morning, remind each and every one of us that when we're prospecting, when we're having, what is prospecting? It's having conversations with people. When we're having conversations with people that are prospective customers or prospective business partners, thus the name prospecting, um, our mindset, what we truly believe in our heart and our mind determines so much of our success, so much of our success. If we are not confident in the that the products actually are effective and safe and healthy and you know effective i guess is if i was going to use one word it, we're going to have a difficult time our our confidence let me say it this way our confidence or our lack thereof is going to be transferred to the person we're talking to whether we realize it or not and that's the difference between somebody who seems to get everybody to sign up and somebody who seems to not be able to get a sign up. Oftentimes that's a big, it's one of the biggest, it is the, uh, it's gotta be the biggest determining factor. I'm not saying it's the only thing. It's not the only thing. It's the biggest thing. There's my notes. They finally printed. Um, it's, it's the biggest thing and our posture, how we communicate the way we type in communication, the way we speak in communication, the way our body language is when we communicate, if it's through a screen or in person, it comes from it's it comes from our confidence or our lack thereof again. And I love how Dan Sullivan talks about the four C's uh, commit, we commit, we got to make a commitment first to something and not to get hung up in these four C's, but it's, it's really simple. When we commit to something like building a business means talking to people. Okay. We make this commitment to prospect. Then it takes courage to act on that commitment. That's the second C it takes courage to act on that commitment, right? To step outside our comfort zone and act. But when we do and we fail and we get up, but eventually we say something right and we get a positive response, it builds confidence and, uh, or it builds capabilities. I say I'm getting it backwards. It builds capabilities because we refine the way we type and we refine the way we speak and we refine our body language as we do it. And the more we do it, we develop these, the third C capabilities, but you only develop capabilities by first committing and have courage to act and mess up and say it wrong and type it wrong and make adjustments and get it right. And then we develop capabilities. That's skills. And as we develop capabilities, guess what happens? Our confidence goes up. And as our confidence goes up, it feeds this whole cycle. Well, now I'm willing to commit to more. Hey, if I've got confidence, I can get someone to say yes, even if it's one out of 20, one out of 100, one out of five. Well, then I'm, I've got confidence then to have more of these conversations because I know I'm getting better. I've developed capabilities, which has increased my confidence. And now I'm going to commit to doing it more and I'm going to build, you know, which is going to take courage again and build more capabilities. And the cycle continues. Some people say, well, when it comes to posture, you know, you, you might've heard the saying, you got to fake it till you make it. And there's people out there trying to fake it till they make it, by the way, plenty of, plenty of examples of that. I would like to say you have to faith it until you make it. You have to faith it. You have to have a vision of where you're going on your weight loss journey before you've even lost your first pound, maybe. You have to have a vision of where you're going with your business, maybe before you've got your first paycheck. 
Now, obviously your first belief check increases your confidence in your belief. The first pound you lose increases your confidence that the products work, of course, but we have to still faith it until we make it. We have a vision, if you do, of being, um, have a neo life be your full-time income or whatever your vision is. It may not be that. Most of us aren't at our vision yet and we hasn't arrived. We haven't uh, realized that, but we still have to have the belief, the confidence, the faith, whatever you want to call it, that it's hap- that we're in the journey, that we're in process, right? And so that's super important because if we don't truly have the faith, the belief, the confidence, whatever word you want to use there or all the above, then it's going to affect our posture. It's going to affect the, our, 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 our ability to communicate effectively. And, um, you know, it's, it's the reason why some people, have you noticed how some people, I don't know if you, you can relate with this, but some people in our business get the, get objections often from people that other people don't get. It's like, some people are like, everybody thinks it's too expensive. And other people are like, I mean, yeah, not that I haven't heard that before. Of course, we've all heard that before, but that's not an issue for me, right? Other people are like, nobody's interested in the business. And other people are like, I find a lot of people that are open to the business. And and I could give example after example, right? I just use price and I use the business as two examples. And what is the difference? The di- I mean, there are other things, but I think the biggest difference is the person who finds a lot of people that are open to looking at the business is really excited, enthusiastic, and believes in the business that it is a really good thing for the person they're talking to. The person who doesn't get a ton of price objections is the person who believes these things could be, these products could be twice the cost and they'd still be an incredible value, like I believe, right? So, Somebody was telling me the other day that, uh, you know, they've never got somebody to buy a weight loss solution. I don't think I might be getting this a little bit wrong, but it's I, I think I'm saying it right, that they've never got somebody to buy a weight loss solution. The most they've ever gotten somebody to purchase is a breakfast solution or, you know, vitality solution. And that just the people that they run into just can't afford a weight loss solution. Two hundred and you know, 40, 50 bucks. And I was thinking about that. And I'm like, man, some of the most broke people I know spend more than 250 bucks a month on Botox, lip filler, hair color, lotto tickets, alcohol, tobacco, medications, feed to feed their horses, stuff to care for their pets, uh, eating out. And I just made that quick list. I mean, that almost hits everybody I know. Uh, Not everybody I know. Let me say it this way. That's a huge segment of the quote people that are broke that can't afford a, a weight loss solution might fall into one or more of those categories. And so here's the point. It's not about whether someone has horses or pets or does Botox. It's about people are going to pay for whatever they desire that they see the value that's great enough to go get it almost at any price. And I'm saying that within reason, but we're not talking about a 500, we're not talking about a $5,000 sale. We're not talking about a thousand dollar sale. We're talking about a 50 to $250 sale. And these are things, my point, people that literally would be considered, you know, poverty level or whatever. There's, I'm not saying everyone, I'm not saying everyone, but there are plenty of examples of people in that category that are spending that kind of money on other things. And so my point is this, my point is we have to keep our heads squared away on what things, what the value is that we're offering so that it doesn't mess with our head and mess with our posture and mess with our confidence and mess with our communication. If we're going to assume somebody is not going to be open to the business, or we're going to assume someone's going to think, oh, they're just asking me if I'm open to the business because they need me. They're needy of me more than I, I, you know, more than they're caring about my best. Or we're going to assume somebody's ask thinks, 
oh, well, that's going to be too expensive, a, a weight loss solution. We've already lost before we even asked. So I don't even know if it's worth asking. We need to change our mind. And the way to change our mind also is by asking and doing it more. And you start realizing like more and more, I'm so proud of so many of you that are, um, that are, that are being more, if, if you want to use the word bold, I guess, um, to share the business. I mean, to ask, if just ask if somebody's open to looking at the business and it's fun getting the stories back from several of you where it's like, ah, so-and-so was open to the business, like someone I just met, like a stranger or friends. And so I wanted to start with that. And then I wanted to kind of circle back around to um, just some of the things I like. I feel like I've said this before, but I don't know. I just feel like it could be helpful again. To, I, I know Nicole and I were talking the other day. We're like, we really need to say things over that are important over and over and over again for other people's sake over the weeks and months and years, not just think, well, I said it once because as she was saying, and I was agreeing, I'm like, we both were like, yes, yes. We both are the same way. Nicole and I are the same way. It's like, how many times do we need to hear something before it finally kind of gets locked in and clicks? I mean, I might have to hear something on a leadership call for the fourth time before I really realize, okay, I kind of, I got the proven 33 now, or I got the new, whatever, whatever's new, whatever's different. Like it takes multiple times sometimes for us. So anyway, all that to say is, um, I was just thinking, well, some of these things, some people on this call have never heard and, and other things that we, we could probably stand to, you know, be helpful to you here again. But one, some of the things, I just want to share some of the things I love doing and prospecting when it comes to the business, okay? Um, when, when it comes to the business, I love, if it's somebody I don't know well, because I like if, I wouldn't know what their occupation is, that's kind of a determining factor. If you don't know their occupation, we probably don't know them very well, is I love asking people real simply, again, this is in person, this is when I meet someone out and about, this is in messenger and text, wherever the conversation's taking place. I love asking people, what do you do? I, I love asking people how long they've done it. I like asking questions that do two things. They help me get to know the person. So if I never, ever, ever end up getting to quote prospect them in the business, I at least develop the relationship. One, two is I love asking questions that do that and have a high likelihood of me having a, a smoother opportunity, a more natural opportunity to get to ask them if they're open to looking at the business. So that's why I like some of these questions. What do you do? Awesome. How long have you done it? Awesome. One month, three months, three years, 30 years. I don't care the answer. I, I'm just getting to know them. But I love following up with the third question is, wow, you must love what you, you must love it then. I mean, if someone's been doing it for six months, that's six months longer than they would have done it if if they hated it and wanted to quit after one day. So to me, I almost don't even care how long they've been doing it, you know, unless it's one day. <laughs> I mean, but if it's months or years, it's like, wow, you must, you must enjoy it. And oftentimes the answer is no, I don't enjoy it. Um, but regardless of what their answer is, then I love just getting to ask questions like, well, what is the, what do you, what is the most rewarding or, you know, enjoyable thing about that? Whatever the occupation is, I'd love to learn. What is one of the most challenging things about that? You know, I don't sound like I'm interrogating them. I sound like I care because I actually do. But at any point in that, it's like, wow, at any point in that conversation, it's so quick and it's so easy. I'm sorry to be able to just say, wow, have you ever considered doing something else? Would you ever be, man? And another one I wrote down, I jotted down. I'm like, I love letting people know that I'm in the process of launching a new team or I'm in the process of launching new teams in my business is another thing that oftentimes I will like to share with people. Another thing I love to share with people is to give them a sincere compliment. If I truly can, if I can't give someone a sincere compliment, I wouldn't want to work with them. If I can't find something good to compliment somebody on, I can tell you, I don't really want them in my business, which means, let me say it a different way. Almost everybody, almost everybody, I can sincerely compliment. I can find some reason to compliment them. And I love doing it. And I'm looking for opportunities to compliment them and let them know that I 
I'd give them the compliment, whatever it is. Wow. You're very, whatever you're great at this. You're, I, I noticed you're exceptionally good at this or, but whatever the thing is, the compliment, I would love to have someone like you in my business. I would love to have someone like you in my team, maybe said a different way. Um, is another, if you want one-liners, I mean, there's just things that just naturally flow in conversations, but they only naturally flow in conversations because I made a commitment to be courageous, to start conversations, to do this a lot. And so now it's very natural and very enjoyable. And it's enjoyable because it's enjoyable for the other person too, I can tell, because they can tell someone's really taken an in a genuine interest in them. Who doesn't love a compliment? Who doesn't want to be told they'd love... They, they would love to have us in their team. I mean, who doesn't want to hear that, even if we're not even open to it? It's really fun. Um, I'd love to work with someone like you after I give them a compliment. I don't know if I said that already. I'd love to work with, with someone like you. I'd love to get to spend more time working with someone like you. I'd love to have someone like you on my team. Um, I'd love to have someone like you in my business. And maybe the best follow-up to any of that is, are you at all open to taking a look at what we do? Said another way, are you at all open to taking a look at a way to earn some additional income from your phone? Are you at all open to creating an additional income stream outside of dentistry? Are you at all open to learning how what we do may be a benefit to you and your family's life? These are just simple questions that oftentimes especially if we showed we cared. And this could have been, this literally could be 30 seconds into a conversation. This could be the first messenger chat back and forth. I mean, this does not have to be five hours of talking to somebody, let alone five minutes. It doesn't have to be. It can be, or it cannot be. But by the time you've complimented somebody and, and, and built a, a connection, however long or quick that might've happened, and comp it, it's, I find, and, and you have the posture and the belief that they need the business, likely, let me, let me say it this way. You have the confidence and the belief that if they say yes to this business, if they say yes to Lincoln Arms with you and partnering with you in this thing and doing this, if you have the confidence and posture to believe that it will bless them and their health and their finances and their family's life more, much more than it will ever put money in your pocket. And I believe that. I hope you do too. Someone can partner with us in business and it, it Neil Life, it, the whole totality of it, this team that they become a part of, the products, the business, the income, the impact, the purpose, all of that, the, the, the personal growth and development that they're going to gain, their communication skills they're going to improve in, that's going to improve their marriage and their parenting and all areas of their life and their friendship. I hope you like me believe that it's going to benefit them in all those ways, way more than the leadership development bonus. You or I are going to earn on them month after month, after month, after month for the business that they successfully build. Do you believe that? I mean, that's a really good question to ask. Do you believe that? Or do you believe the flip that you need them more than they need Neolife? Because if you believe, or I believe we need them and we're needing Ellie more than they need Neolife, potentially, <clears throat> then it's going to come across in our posture. It's, it's going to, we're going to be more likely to come across with commission breath. We're going to be more likely to be taken wrongly. So then this all comes back full circle to where I kind of began our belief in whether the products are expensive or not, as an example, come back to the business, our belief in whether or not the business opportunity is more valuable to them than it is to us to have them join. It puts it in a whole nother frame. Then if we believe that it's more, it's, there's way more upside for them to join us in business than for us. Now it takes the focus off. Well, I don't want to be one of those. And I don't want to da, 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 da. It's like, well, I don't want to be one of those that withholds good from somebody. I don't want to be one of those that doesn't know if somebody's drowning out there in the middle of the river or just swimming. I can't tell unless I ask. So I got to throw the life preserver that I have. I know I have. I got to Dwight talks a lot about helping people get out of jail as an analogy to getting to freedom through Neo life, but I've got to throw them the raft to let them decide whether they're like, no, oh, no, thanks. I'm just swimming. Don't need your life preserver or yeah, 
dude, I am kind of drowning out here. Let me grab that thing. Will you pull me to shore with the rope now? We don't see the thing is in the business. We don't know. We can't even see somebody out in the middle of the river. We don't know if they're on their knees at night praying for a solution because they have no purpose in their job and they can't stand it. And they would give any, they take a pay cut just to have a purpose and passion to wake up and go to work. That's a lot of people. We don't know if they're on their knees at night praying for something to take the load of the debt that is suffocating them, that's affecting their marriage, that's affecting their health, that's affecting all this other areas of their life. We don't know. We only know if we ask, are you open? That's the only way. Okay. So again, you see how all this, I'm just saying it really revolves around our mindset and our perspective of the business. I think so many of us tend to think, well, the products are, if they, if someone gets on the products, they're going to benefit so much more from the products than the commission I earn. But do you feel the same way all about the business? Because if we do feel the same way about the business, and, and I think if we all think it through, we will come to that conclusion because we're all in the business. Why are we all in the business for all those reasons, right? So keeping our head in the game and squared away right is the best way to keep, to be able to help people the most. And one of the last things I want to share is I didn't realize I had so much to share. That usually happens. Sorry. Is I'll wrap it up with this. Leave a couple of minutes at least left at the end. Be ready to give an answer because as soon as you start telling, asking people what they do, how many kids do you have? What are they going to ask you? How many kids do you have? Oh, where do you live? What are they going to ask you? Well, where do you live? When you say, what do you do for a living? They're likely going to ask you, what do you do? And actually, I got two things. This and one more is be ready to give an answer. Like you better have already prepared your answer ahead of time and be excited when they ask you, what do you do? Posture, confidence, belief, faith. Where are you going? What's that vision you have? It better roll off your tongue like butter. And if it doesn't, it will, if you do it enough times, I promise you. And it can be, I, okay, these are my words. You'd pick yours. Just know, be ready to give an answer. Okay. Be ready to give every man and woman an answer. And my kind of go to oftentimes is, well, what do you do? I have the best job on the planet. I just come out with, I have the best job on the planet. I, that's just what I do. I mean, you can copy it. You cannot. I don't care. I have an answer that would be compelling to someone to lean in and go, Hmm. And I not push back because I just gave you a 60 second or, you know, just speech on what I do for a living. No, don't do that. I said, I say, I, ha I have the best job on the planet. I get to, and then depending on what I know about them, it's going to come out a little differently, different times. I get to make money from my phone. I have the best job on the planet. I wrote down some, I get to lose weight and get fit and help other people do the same. I mean, depending on who I'm looking at and what, what our conversation was up to that point, am I going to say things that might be more attractive to them? Of course I'm going to, you know, um, if I'm talking to a male versus a female, I mean, it might be a little different depending, but generally speaking, if it's about the business, it doesn't matter if they're male or female, but Hey, I get to, I get to help people pay off debt and get debt free. I have the best job on the planet. I get to live healthier. I get to help people live healthier and happier lives. Zip. Hey, I have the best job on the planet. I get to help people leverage the power of the internet and social media to make money from their phone. I, I love what I do. Zip. Oh, really? Well, tell what, and they might not ask more follow up questions. Well, they're not that curious. That's fine. Um, I got, I had the best job on the planet. I get to uh, help people escape the rat race and live a life of purpose, passion, and freedom. It's been the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Um, I got the best job on the planet. I get to put the home back at home business for people. I mean, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to say, but just be ready to give an answer. And I also love how, even if you're brand new, if you have a vision for where you're going, you can communicate it. If you have no vision for where you're going, you can't communicate a vision you don't have. You can even add on, I have the best job on the planet. I get to blank. And at the rate I'm going, at the rate this is going, I'll be able to blank. Fill it in, write that down. And at the rate I'm going, I'll be able to blank. Give you some examples. And at the rate I'm going, I mean, 30 minutes a day, and I'm gonna be able to be making our house payment here before long. 
at the rate I'm going, you know, an hour a day into this thing, and I'm going to be able to pay, be making the car payment for our family here before long. At the rate we're going, my husband's going to retire 10 years earlier than he, he would have otherwise. At the rate we're going, I'm going to put this day job down here in another three years or another year or another six months or another five years, whatever your vision is. See, it just doesn't even matter what it is. It's that you have a vision and you can communicate it. Really? Well, tell me more. And not everybody will, but those that are open and interested will. And this is how we have these conversations. Again, why do some people have all kinds of people that are open and interested to the business and others just can't find anybody that's interested in the business? That's the, this is why. Um, man, what was the other thing? I didn't have it in my notes and I just thought of it. Any comments or questions in closing? Maybe I'll think of it here in a minute. I hope that's helpful. What you shared, Alan, is the foundation of building this business. I hope people will not just listen to this and be encouraged. I hope they will memorize these statements you've given them. They will work through every statement you've made and apply it to their life and make sure they're applying it to their life. It's where the business happens. Thank you, Lawrence. And, and I appreciate that. And, and the other thing too, is it's so fun. These people are going to say, yeah, I'm open. And then as you get to share and you ATM them, you invite them to a Zoom health talk, you invite them to whatever you invite them to. And then they learn a little bit. And then, you know, you have more conversation, you put them in a group chat with your upline, you do whatever you do. And then a lot of them aren't going to join as promoters, but a lot of them are going to go, well, man, this is interesting. I, I think I'd like to try the products and see how the products work out for me. Great. You got a club member. I mean, You'll get more club members than promoters leading with business, but you'll get like no promoters if you never talk about the business. So that's the other way to look at it. I'm not saying everyone has to lead with business. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. Um, when the opportunity and the conversation goes to products, it goes to products. But uh, I love even when people are just, oh, it's just a conversation about the products, you know, and I'm going to invite them into the healthy living group and tag them in the first two videos there. I like asking them before I even do that. Great. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to invite you in this private group. I'm going to tag you in these first two videos and guide number one. It's going to be great little six minute videos. Great information. We do have another Facebook group for the income side of things. You're not open to that, right? You're, are you open to the, the uh, I don't always ask it that way, but are you open to learning about that too? Or do you just want to learn about the products? And they say one of two things, 50, 50. No, I'm just, I just want to learn about the products. I'm not kidding you. Probably close to half the time. They're like, oh. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and invite me to that too. I mean, they're curious now. So even when you lead with the products, you can still ask them, you know, it's already been closed. Like you've invited them to the Zoom health talk. You've invited them to the Facebook group. You've already invited them and they've said, yeah, you've got a plan. By the way, we have this other Facebook group for the business information. Would you be interested in learning about that too or just the products? It's a great after the close kind of question. And you'll be surprised, I think, how many people, especially if you don't ask it like, you wouldn't be interested in that, right? Like that's like, if you're scared of it, no, like we have this other amazing Facebook group and it's all about the, you know, income opportunity and now people are changing their lives there and the impact that's making. Would that be of interest to you to learn about that too? I just wanted to ask, you know, before we do this thing or not, no worries either way. Um, oh no, no, just the products is fine. Okay, great. And now they know there's a business opportunity if it never comes up again for weeks or months. Isn't that cool? All right. Anyone else before we close it down? I don't remember what the other thing I was going to say was. I'm bummed, but it, I thought it was good, but not good enough to remember, apparently. All right. Well, people need to save this link of this talk for every brand new distributor they get or distributors that weren't on today. I mean, I'm telling you, this talk is so awesome. It's so important for people to realize they're doing a favor to people. They need to have that mindset. And that's what Alan's been sharing. You need to think of it like that, or you're never going to ask. And it's way more fun too. It's more hey, fun. Yeah. Kelly. I'm so sorry. This is Callie. I just, this reminded me of um, Witt's talk at leadership retreat because he gave statistics talking about the fact that like 80% of millennials are open to a side hustle or are 50% already have a side hustle. I understand this mindset of approaching and like being worried that people are going to think that all these things that you talked about at the beginning, but changing my mindset and realizing that literally social media has changed the game 
for this because everybody just knows that people are, they have a side hustle and, and a lot of people aren't looking for a full-time business. They're looking for a side hustle. They're looking to pay for Christmas presents or pay for their kids' classes or whatever. And they'll be just as committed to doing that because they need that extra $200 a month. But it knowing that everybody out there, literally, this is just the mindset of everybody now. If they're on social media, they know that people have a side hustle. And it's really just legitimately, it's which side hustle are they going to end up doing? So you want to be the one that you're connected to with them and get them connected to your side hustle because they're going to do it eventually. That's a great point, Kelly. I love it. And the only thing I'd add to that is I also love, I love talking about it as a side income or an additional income stream and continuing that in that same breath or in that same sentence, if you're typing, letting them know that can very possibly turn into a full-time income stream like it has for so many other of my business partners. There are people on this call besides us that it's a full-time income. They may still keep a job or a business they run, but it's a full-time income. There are many people just in our team that have full-time incomes. I mean, the average household income is what, 50 grand in the in the US or something like that. We have plenty of people on our team making 50 grand a year in Neo Life. It's a full-time income. So just be careful not to let somebody who has bigger visions than uh, what a side of hustle income might represent to let them also know, I think equally important that, yeah, this can be an extra couple hundred dollars a month for you or a couple hundred thousand dollars a month for you, whatever you want to make it <laughs> too. And that there are people in our, in your team, in your team, you're a part of this team. You have people in your team, multitude of people, your business partners making full-time incomes. So it's what you want to make it. I think that's also important to add, especially with certain people. Some people won't matter, but you don't always know who wants more than a thousand dollars a month, you know, or 200 a month. So thank you though, Callie. I love that. Love it. All right, guys. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for what y'all shared and uh, for joining us. And we'll get this recording up uh, soon in wisdom builders. I think somebody asked how to share it. It'll be posted in wisdom builders later this afternoon, assuming Renetta doesn't have internet issues up there in Chewila, Washington. All right. See you guys.